Hello, my name is John Slife. Uh, we're going to talk about the Gutenberg Press and Johann Gutenberg's innovation of movable type. This is a reproduction of Gutenberg's printing press, circa 1450s, and uh, we're going to print a page of the Bible. This is 1 Samuel, chapters 25 and 26 that we're going to print. So let's get into the printing. What we're going to do is we have these, these are called ink balls or ink blotters. We're going to pick up just a little bit of ink. Just, just a tiny bit. We work that around on here until we have a nice even layer of ink. So there's no blops and globs. When we get that spread around nice and even, we'll apply it to the text. Now this text that's in here is a solid plate as we travel with this. Gutenberg's innovation was individual letters, individual type. So we're going to put the, the ink on here. We just roll this on gently, nice and even. The goal is a thin layer of ink evenly across the type. This carries the paper. We've got a stack of paper in here. This protects the paper from any excess ink. Push this in, bring this bar around. This puts about 2,000 pounds of pressure on the paper. We have a page from the Gutenberg Bible. Okay, so that's kind of a short version of it. Johann Gutenberg grew up in a family of metal workers. His father was the manager of the city mint in Mainz, Germany. Gutenberg grew up with familiarity around working with metals, engraving, this sort of thing. Gutenberg had the idea of movable type somewhere in the 1440s. He spent several years developing his project, getting the, the type right. The manuscript Bibles, the manuscript anything at that time was very expensive. Scribes were the highest paid profession of their day. The scribes in today's economy would be the equivalent of maybe a high priced lawyer. If you needed a copy of the Bible, a copy of a single page, a scribe would take eight to 10 hours to copy that page. So the cost was extraordinary. If you wanted a copy of the Bible, the cost would just be way beyond the reach of most any person. So written materials were out of the reach of most people. So the common people that spoke German, spoke English, those types of things, those languages didn't have much of a written form at this time. The scribes, when they would make a copy of the Bible, it was typically under contract. When Gutenberg had the idea of movable type, he used a manuscript Bible and his engravers that he hired from his father's shop picked the best letters from the page, the best letter F, the best letter P, M, whatever. And uh, when they engraved it and they got it exactly the way they wanted it, that's the one they cast and they printed that over and over. That was a big step forward. The scribes, as good as they were, they'd still make mistakes, they would still have variations in their writing. So when Gutenberg was able to create the perfect letter and then replicate it over and over, that improved the text of the materials. The next thing that he wanted to do was when a manuscript page was done, the left-hand margin was straight and solid. The right-hand edge would end where it ends. Just like when you write on a paper and you write a paragraph, the words don't always align on the end. Gutenberg used wedges that would push the words out and space them. So we had a perfect right and left hand justified column. So when the product was done, every letter was perfect every time, every column was perfect every time, the scribes could not match that. And they knew that their days of copying manuscripts was coming to an end. Gutenberg was not the first inventor to come up with movable type. There was a Chinese inventor about 800 years before Gutenberg that had invented movable type. The problem was 
There was over 3,500 characters, and of course they were in porcelain. So it was just unwieldy, not practical. About 400 years later, there was a Korean inventor that had invented the uh, movable type, but he was dealing with about 1,400 characters. Again, it was just impractical. When Gutenberg had the idea of movable type, using lead and dealing with 26 characters, it was much more practical. When the characters flattened out, he could simply melt the lead and recast new letters.